In this series of videos, we're going to be taking a look at Word 2013 Unit D, which is entitled Formatting Documents. After watching this series of videos in this unit, you will be able to set document margins, create sections and columns, insert page breaks, insert page numbers, add headers and footers, insert a table, add footnotes and endnotes, insert citations, and manage sources and create a bibliography. We're going to be starting off on page Word 78 uh, on there, which is entitled to Set Document Margins. And of course, you will be needing the file WDD1 from your course sites on there. Now, when you download it, of course, once again, uh, it may open up in this protected view. Uh, if it does open up in this protected view, you are going to have to go ahead and click on Enable Editing to be able to complete the assignment. Now, on page Word 78, um, the top paragraph reads, Changing a document's margins is one way to change the appearance of a document and control the amount of text that fits on a page. The margins of a document are the blank areas between the edge of the text and the edge of the page. When you create a document in Word, the default margins are one inch at the top, bottom, left, and right sides of the page. You can adjust the size of a document's margins using the margins command on the page layout tab or using the rulers. So once again you will need this WDD1 file and remember to enable editing if it comes up in the protected mode. The first thing that we're going to do is, is that we're going to go ahead and do a save as on this. So we'll have to click our file tab. Click on save as. and then save this uh, to your current folder in which you're currently saving your files. I'm going to be saving mine on the desktop today, uh, but you can be saving yours into the My Documents or onto your home directories. The file name we're going to save this file as is WD, excuse me, WD, D, dash, Healthy, Traveler. And then we're going to click on our save button and that is going to save our document. Of course once again take a notice at the title bar up here and you'll notice that the uh, name of the file has been changed. Now one thing that we want to make sure that we do have is we want to make sure that uh, we are of course number one in uh, the print layout view and if you're not currently in print layout view you can take a look down here at the bottom uh, and make sure that the print layout is selected or you can click on your view uh, tab up here and make sure print layout is uh, selected as well. That's two ways that you can do that. Another thing that we want to make sure that we have available is our ruler. We, and if your uh, document currently does not have a ruler that goes across the top here and one that runs down the side, you need to click on this view tab and then make sure that this ruler checkbox is selected and that way it will show the ruler in your document. So go ahead and click back on your home tab then. Uh, step two tells us that we want to scroll through the document to get a feel for its contents. So we can see that we have our titles and we have some paragraphs and some different sections. We've got some bulleted text, which we learned in the last series of videos uh, on there. We have some indentions with uh, italic text here. Um, so we want to kind of take a look. And then here, of course, uh, is a uh, shaded in area that has a border. Uh, so that's something that we also covered in our last uh, unit as well. Uh, there's some clip art uh, images there. So you can see that this is a rather long document. It should be about five pages that's on there. Uh, and of course, once again, in this unit, we're going to be formatting the document, uh, which means that we're just going to be making changes to this. To get back to the top of the page, we want to press our Control and then Home key, and that will take us back up to the top of the document. And of course, as we said before, the report is currently five pages long. And of course, you can also notice down here on the status bar, it's going to indicate the page where the insertion point is located and the total number of pages in the document. So back up here at the top of page one, we should be on page one of five. Of course, also uh, on my version here, uh, it also has uh, the number of words. So there's 1,025 words in this document as well. On step three, it tells us that we want to click the page layout tab. So we go to the page layout tab up here. And then it tells us we want to click the Margins button in the Page Setup group. So over here's our Page Setup group, and right here's our Margins button. 
And when you click on that, there are some default margin settings, normal, narrow, moderate, wide, mirrored, uh, some different settings that's on there, and it tells you the dimensions uh, or you know how wide uh, the margins are going to be. Uh, of course, the normal is one inch all the way around. Of course, you can make them narrow, or you can even go down here to uh, custom margins and uh, customize it yourself. Now, this is what we call the margin menu, and that's going to open up. And you can select the predefined margins, or you can click on the custom margins to change your own. So what we are going to do is we're going to click on custom margins uh, at the bottom, and that is step four. And what's going to happen is, is that the page setup dialog box will open with the margins tab displayed. And of course that's what it looks like right here. Now you can use the margins tab to change the top, left, bottom, and right margins of the document. To change the orientation of the pages from portrait to landscape, which we see that's right here, we can do that here as well. And of course remember that if we're taking a look at a portrait orientation, we're talking about the page is going to be taller than what it is wide. And of course if we're looking at the landscape orientation here, we're talking about a page that is wider than it is tall. Now this report is going to be using the portrait orientation, so we want to leave that alone. It should be selected in this blue box here. Now you can also use the orientation button, which is right up here in the page setup group, uh, to change the orientation of a document as well. And sometimes you have to take a look at your document to determine uh, which layout is going to be the best, uh, whether it be portrait or landscape. Now, of course, another way to get to this page setup dialog box is uh, to click this little launcher button as well. And of course, we do have the different tabs, margin, paper, and layout, and we'll be using those uh, throughout this lesson. On step five, it tells us that we want to click the top down arrow. So right here's our top, and notice that what, right now it's currently at one inch. And we want to click this bottom arrow here three times. And we're going to take that to 0.7 or 7 tenths of an inch. And then we're going to go down here to the bottom, over here directly to our right there, uh, where the bottom is currently one inch. We're also going to click the bottom down arrow until 7 tenths of an inch up here as well. And when we do this, the top and the bottom margins are now going to be 0.7 of an inch. Step 6 tells us that we're going to press our tab key from here, and that should move uh, our cursor to the left indent box. And once we have that, notice it's highlighted, and we're just going to type in 0.7. So you can use the up and down arrows, or you can just type in uh, the size of the margins that you want to use. And remember, once again, margins are the blank areas between the edge of the page and the edge of your text. So the smaller the margins, the more that fits in on your text. The larger the margins, uh, the less amount that's going to fit in on your page uh, of text. Of course, after this, we're going to click on the Tab key again, and we're going to type in 0.7 in the right text box. And so that is going to make 7 tenths of an inch all the way around. Now, of course, you can change the margin settings by using the arrows or, of course, typing a value as we've been doing. To accept the changes on here, we're going to click on OK, and that is step seven. And, of course, now the document margins have been changed to 7 tenths of an inch all the way around, which you should see that on here as well. Now, the location of each margin, the right, left, top, and bottom, is shown on the horizontal and vertical rulers at the intersection of the white and shaded areas. So if you notice uh, here on our um, horizontal, uh, or excuse me, our vertical ruler over here, here's our top margin over here. On our horizontal ruler, here's our left margin, and here's our right margin right here, and you'll notice that the text lines up right on this line right here, and those are our margins. Now you can also change a margin setting by using your pointer and drag the intersection to a new location on the ruler, because if you notice you put your insertion point right here, uh, or not your insertion point, but your mouse cursor, uh, you notice it turns to a double arrow. And you can click and drag that to adjust your margins as well. And same thing over here on uh, your uh, vertical ruler. Uh, notice how it has that as well. If we scroll down a little bit, there we notice is our uh, bottom margin. On step eight, it tells us that we want to click on our view tab. And we're going to click the multiple pages button in the zoom group. So here we are in our zoom group. We're going to click on the multiple pages button. And of course, now we see that here's our document as it is. Now it's still five pages long. We can take a look down at the status bar, which tells us that uh, on there as well. 
Now, one thing you do need to know about margins is that the minimum allowable margin settings really depend on the printer uh, that you have and the size of paper you're using. Now, Word will display a warning message if you set the margins that are too close or too uh, narrow uh, for your printer. And uh, that, like I said, some printers are able to print, you know, pretty much almost all the way to the edge of the paper. Uh, most printers do have a area in which they are not going to be able to print in. And of course, uh, Word will identify and it takes a look at what printers you have installed and it roughly knows how much of a margin uh, is the minimum on what you can have and it will alert you to that. Of course, we can take a look at all five pages and notice that when we did that, uh, the margins on all of our pages have been changed all at the same time. Of course, now we can go back up to our control and home to get back up to the top of our document. And we're going to go down here to where it says 61%. We're going to click on that and we're going to make that 100% and click on OK. Uh, so this is going to take us back to a single page view uh, on here as well. And we want to go ahead and make sure that we save our changes. Now, of course, by default, the documents you create in Word is going to use an 8.5 by 11 uh, paper size in portrait orientations with the default margin settings of 1 inch all the way around. Now, you can change the orientation, margin settings, and paper size to common settings using the orientation, margins, and size buttons in the Page Setup group on the Page Layout tab. You can also adjust these settings and others in the Page Setup dialog box. For example, to change the layout of multiple pages, use the multiple pages list arrow on the margins tab to create pages that use mirror margins that include two pages per sheet of paper or that are formatted using a book fold. And of course mirror margins are used in a document with facing pages such as a magazine where the margins on the left page of the document are a mirror image of the margins on the right page. Now, documents with mirror margins have inside and outside margins rather than right and left margins. Now, of course, another type of margin is what we call a gutter margin, which is used in documents that are bound, such as books. Now, a gutter adds extra space to the left, top, or inside margin to allow for the binding. Add a gutter to a document by adjusting the setting and the gutter position in the text box on the margins tab. To change the size of the paper used, Use the paper size list arrow on the paper tab to select the standard paper size or enter custom measurements in the width and height text boxes. So once again, if we would go to our page layout tab and we go down here to our custom margins, uh, we can take a look down here. Of course, here's our multiple pages that we can use, but also here it talks about our gutter positioning, you know, whether uh, how much of a gutter we would like to add and where we would like to add that to. And of course, if you're wanting to change to mirror margins, such as like for a magazine, this is where you can do that as well and have the uh, mirror uh, the margins mirror each other. Because uh, if you ever read a magazine before, sometimes they have a little bit more of a uh, margin uh, on the inside of it to allow for the uh, pages to be stapled together. But we would we don't want to make any changes to this document at this point, so we're just going to go ahead and click on cancel. And that concludes uh, video one, which is talking about setting document margins, which is on Word uh, 78 and 79. In the next video, we're going to be talking about creating sections and columns.